especially to somebody like Max Holden. seem yourself. And who do I seem like? I only want to know if there is something that I could do for you. Well, sure, sure. You can start by getting these guys out of my sound system. The Jakaras Act, they... they don't belong here anymore. Okay. Do you have any preferences? Whatever. As long as it's not blue, Jim. Piano. Piano has always made me feel better. Mm. Lucky you. Um, Uncle RJ, what is up with you? What's up? You mean besides the fact that Jakara jumped ship to go join Holden at Rhodey's? I'll go change that music. Thank you. And tell Wendy Table 5 is still waiting for their drinks. Wendy, Uncle RJ wanted me to tell you, not that you don't know already, that uh, Table 5 is still waiting for their drinks. Still? Well, they only still ordered them a minute ago. I'm mixing as fast as I can. I'm just passing on the message. What's up his nose, anyway? <clears throat> well, good evening, RJ. Oh, come on, you don't look too thrilled to see me. <laughs> well, historically, the appearance of my elder sibling has not been cause for me to get all warm inside. Yeah, well, you know, the way I figure it, we're in the same boat. Well, meaning that Carlotta and Jakara are off in their own boats. So you and I are basically miserable about the same thing at the same time. We are cosmically aligned. We should celebrate our oneness. <laughs> well, you finally lost your mind. <laughs> so come on. Help me get it back. What do you say? Max was not himself tonight. Oh, yeah? Who was he? Just some strange, weird, desperate guy. Bo, oh, are we following him? Who? Max? What other him are we discussing? No, we're not following him. We're just driving along behind him. Uh, well, yes, that's true. But if we're going home, we're going in the complete opposite direction. We was sure in a hurry to get out of there. Wasn't he left Blair at his place? I don't know. Maybe he was, uh, maybe he had to go to Rhodey's and check things out there. Well, Rhodey's is east. We are driving north. Okay, maybe he went for pizza, you know? And he left Blair at the house to watch the kids because they're sleeping upstairs. She was hungry. We should have stayed on Lincoln then and gone to Baggio's. Of course, there's that place on uh, Mountain Road. Maybe he went there, but... Yeah, he, he sure wanted us out of that house tonight, didn't he? Huh? And then Blair kept telling him, you know, go... Tell him, Max. Tell him. Tell him. Go ahead. T tell us what? Tell us that she was hungry. Tell us to, 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 to go away. I mean, you know, so that Max could get in the car and drive hell-bent for leather for that uh, hot-out-of-the-oven pizza with everything on it from the place on Mountain Road. Yeah, could be. He was weird. Well, there he goes. He didn't make the left on Mountain. So we are following him. Yeah. Yeah, so right now we are following him, honey. He's upset about something. Maybe, maybe he needs our help. Whether he wants it or not. I don't give a tinker's damn about your plans tonight. You go back to work, get those figures on my desk by midnight. You... So we just replaced that telephone. Is it my fault I don't make them slammable anymore? How's a man supposed to punctuate a phone call without a slam dunk? What's with you? Uh, Max Holden, see you. That's all I need. No, I've got work to do. I don't want to see him. Nigel, why are you making me a drink? Because Mr. Holden is not taking no for an answer. <laughs> You want those waterfront lots you buy from me tonight? I don't buy. 
buy anything from anyone with that kind of a wild look in their eyes. Come on, Asa, you know you want them, so what's it going to be, yes or no? Well, that depends. On what? Is there something wrong with the lots that you want to unload them so quick? There's nothing wrong with the lots of the exact same lots I bought out from you. Now, what's it going to be? Come on, Asa. Oh, God's sake, just trust me this once. Nigel, what do I always say about that expression, trust me? It's the con man's credo, sir. Exactly. You've been holding on to me for a month, Holden. Now you're chomping on the bit. What's the catch? The catch is that you either take this offer or you pass on it right now. I don't accept any offer until I find out what the hell is spooking you. I knew that. You're always in trouble. What makes it so different this time? Look, I can't go into it. I... Look, I can't. It's look. It's look. It's not about me. Look, it, it involves me, but look, it's 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 not for me. It's not, I didn't double cross anybody. I'm not wheeling and dealing. I'm not in any jeopardy. But but some innocent people are in real danger. Okay. I don't know why, Max. But, hell, I do believe you. Your checkbook, sir. You scare me. I'm most sorry for that, sir. But I know how long you've coveted those lots. I've taken the liberty of filling in Mr. Holden's name. You need only enter the amount and add your signature. Now you really scare me. Well, Max. Seems I got you over a barrel. But if you didn't look so god-awful, I'd do my utmost to lower the price. Okay. You've got eight properties, some better than others. Seventy-five per lot, fair? Thank you. There's one uh, condition. You can't tell anyone about this transaction until it's all over. No, I'm in a hurry. Come on, Ace, you waited this long. Please, just give me a word. Time is money. Something your old man never understood. I want to get moving right away. Besides, I need to gloat around town how you came to me on bended knee, begging me to take the lots off your hand. I'm sorry. Your word or no deal. Commissioner and Mrs. Buchanan. What are you two doing here? Do you have any idea what time it is? Well, Pa, it's, uh, it's been a long time since we've seen you. We were in the neighborhood. We just, you know, thought we'd come by. What are you doing? Following me? I don't know. Should we be? What's going on here? Oh, I'll tell you what's going on here, Bo. Holden here is in a spot so tight, he needed to come to me for help. Max home? No. He didn't stop by Rhodey's tonight. Uh, do you know where he is? He, um, he's running an errand. An errand? At this hour? Are the twins all right? Yeah, they're fine. He, he, he went to get milk. Ah. 
Yeah, I guess with two little ones, there's always something you have to run out for. Right. I, um, I had some good news for Max. I, I wanted to drop by and give it to him personally. Okay, so why don't you tell me, and then I'll tell him when he gets back. Jakara has booked uh, two of the Blue Jay acts into Roadies next week. The reservation book is full. Nobody ever makes reservations for Roadies. Well, that's wonderful. I'll give him the message. That's to be a genius. Stop. Max partnering with Jakara like that. I think I'm going to uh, stick around and give him the news myself. But, hey, look, I really don't know when he's coming. You said back. he went out for milk? I think you look a little nervous here, Blair. Why don't you relax? I'm going to go up and see Frankie and Leslie. No, no, you... You can't do that, Renee. Look, I'm sorry about Jakara. It's a temporary setback. Yeah, well, I hope it's temporary. Because this place is dead. <laughs> Jakara took all of her acts with her to Rhodes. Unfortunately, they'd been booked months ago, and I'd been advertising them all over the East Coast. So folks who aren't up on her change of venue keep showing up here. And I get to tell them that there's no one playing here. It's got to be pure hell. Oh, well, it sure ain't the other place. It's also actionable. I mean, if you want to take Jakar to court, you've got a strong case. So what do you say you take the legal way out? Come on, you know, knock Jakara and Max hold them down on their presumptuous butts. It's not my style. Really? Now, since when is retribution not your style? <laughs> Things change, and uh, I don't want to stir up any trouble between Jakara and me. My, how practical, how mature. I try not to sound so surprised. It's just, it's just plain good business. Yeah, I don't think Holden can make this thing fly. I believe she'll be back here before long. Our J. Max Holden is a better than average businessman. Now, what makes you so sure? Why are you asking so many questions? Look, I'm asking because you, you've always been a realist. Look, RJ, it's not like you to hang on something glimmering in the distance that might be hope. Okay, I'm sorry, Hank. Look, I... I didn't mean to jump down your throat. I'm, I'm just worried about all this. I mean, look, I know things. I know... I know Jakara's smart. I know circumstances change. Someday she'll see what a monumental mistake she has made. <laughs> you are so sure of yourself. <laughs> Look, why do you think that whatever's happening between Jakara and me is any of your damn business? Boys, I hope we're behaving ourselves. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, except for RJ pointing out that I'm putting my nose where it doesn't belong, we're, we're okay. Right, RJ? Mm. We're fine. Excuse me. All right. So, sweetheart, listen, why don't you have a seat? Sit down. Talk to the old man. I know you can take the time away from your customers, uh, or the light thereof. <laughs> How are you, Daddy? RJ sure is calm about his split with Jakara. No, he's not. He's just putting up a really good front. You know, your mother and I, I know we've been a couple of major pains about you working with RJ. Yes, you have. Well, this may sound like music to your ears. I admire the way you stick by RJ through the rough times. And I know that it might be a lot easier for you to just bail out. Yeah, well, the problem with jumping ship, you wind up in the water, and then they sail off on you. Mm-hmm. Assuming that that ship doesn't sink. Indigo's not gonna sink, Daddy. Well, I hope this is as bad as it gets. It will get worse before it gets better. It's just how it goes. But I will never give up on Uncle RJ. Oh, I know that. So, on that note, I will say goodnight, my beauty.
can't. I can't see the twins. I mean, when did you start running Max's household? Look, Renee, they have the flu, all right? I just got them to bed, and I don't want you to go up there and fuss all over them and wake them up, all right? Yeah, I'd do something stupid like that. Look, I didn't I mean... mean... It seems like you kind of moved in here, made yourself at home. You own everything, twins included. Got a problem with that? I wouldn't leave you alone in my house. Hotel. Weren't you declared unfit for the custody of your own child? Todd did that, Renee, and you know it. And did Todd make you push Taya Delgado out of a second-floor story you window? I don't, don't want to fight with you. Well, you know what? You're doing a pretty damn good job of it. This was all your fault anyway. I am just a little uneasy with this new turn that you and Max have taken. So what's it to you? You know how much that man means to me. You nearly destroyed him in the past. Look, I'm not messing up his life right now. I'm trying to help him. What I mean is that I'm not... I'm not leading him into any trouble, all right? Tell me exactly what is going on here. Colin is here in a very personal matter. Right, Nigel? Quite right, sir. Who better to advise him? than me. Does this problem have anything to do with Blair? Blair? Oh, Max, you're not involved in that spider woman's web again, are you? The conversation had nothing to do with Blair. But she was nice enough to keep an eye on my kids while I came over here, though, and I think I'll go home and relieve her of that duty. Good luck, Max. Get out of here. You don't need to tell me twice. Good to see you, Nigel. And you too. Listen, uh, stop following me around or I'll have you drop a writ of harassment for the both of you and then you'll have to bust yourselves. Asa, thank you for everything. Why in the world would someone like Max Holden be coming to you for advice? What's going on with him, Pa? Do you sense any insults in these questions, Nigel? I do, sir. I do think I know a thing or two, Bo. I made a few billion to prove it. And I never said Max Holden had any sense. But he was smart enough to come to me when he needed to be shoved in the right direction. Now, don't you two have anything else to do with your time but tail him around town? Get a life. And don't give me that bull you came to see me. You did not come to see me. They didn't come to see me, right, Nigel? Pa. What? I'm worried about Max. I think he's into something uh, bigger than he can handle right now. And the fact that he would come to see you, of all people, this time of night, that convinces me he's in trouble. Uh, begging your pardon, sir, you have a conference call with those uh, Texas people. Shall I dial the phone? No, no, now? no. I'll do that. And thank you. Bo, you got two choices. Beat it, or I put Nora to work as my assistant. I'm out of here. Come on, Bo. Oh, Bo. If you hear anything about Holden, let me know, will you? I didn't mean to startle you. <laughs> well, that's okay. You know, when a man gives a key to his apartment to his lady, well, he knows he runs the risk that she'll use it to give him a heart attack. Why are you sitting in the dark? I'm not sure. Came in, it was warm and quiet and dark, and I liked it like that. It was peaceful. So, 
How are you? I'm fine. I came to apologize. You know, it took me a while to figure all this out. Sitting in the dark helped. I guess somewhere along the way I convinced myself that it was all right for me to protect Eli by lying to you about what I knew that he did. He destroyed your son's statue. A monument built for and by the people of Angel Square. What he did, I... I hate what he did. Hate the sin. Forgive the sinner. Yeah. But I didn't trust that you'd be able to take it easy on him. Well, I can't say that I would have. And because of that lie, I guess I broke down the trust that you had for me and, and which made me angry at you, which I had no right to be. You feel how you feel. That's it? It's so simple? You feel how you feel? I didn't say do what you do, but how you feel. Yeah, but what I felt and what I did hurt both of us. And I'm so sorry. You know, Renee, I know what this is all about. You can't stand the fact that I walked in and stole Asa from you. <laughs> you still haven't gotten over that, have you? This is a bad idea. You, me alone, waiting for Max. We, our history is too nasty for this. Renee, uh, what are you doing here so late? She uh, stopped by to tell you good news about Rhodes. Yes? Good news. That's great. I'll uh, listen. Uh, listen, Renee, I need, I need, uh... A lot more than good news for me tonight. I always try to help, darling, whenever I can. What is it you need? I need you to buy a Serenity Springs tonight. Why? Why would you want to sell Serenity Springs? I'm just, I'm just tired of it, you know? It's, it's just so tedious pampering all those self-involved people. It's just... Serenity Springs is mortgaged, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I know, and I'm, I'm willing to adjust the price accordingly. Can you buy it? Can you do it? <sighs> There's nothing that I wouldn't do for you, Max. I believe you know that. But you already borrowed from me against roadies to partner with Chikara. Now, if you sell Serenity Springs, aren't you selling your future, the future of your children? I don't care about the future. There is something happening in this house tonight. I, I come in here and Blair is wound up like a brand new fishing line. You fly in here like there are <laughs> bloodhounds on your heels. You have got to tell me what is going on here. I'm standing here coming up with this pitch for the fact that Maggie left me and Al's off with Gabrielle and Ian turned against me and it was just too much for me to handle. I would have bought that much. And I was just so desperate I just started gambling again and I'm in real deep with a loan shark. Are you? No. Renee, Renee, I need money. I need a lot of money. And I need it fast. And I can't. I cannot tell you why. Not yet. I wish to hell that you could tell me the truth and share it with me. But um, if you're that desperate, of course I'll help you. How, how much do you need? Renee, I, uh, I'll need cash. Look, I understand you lied to protect Eli. I understood that from the start. But what you did goes against everything I believe in. Meaning the law? I believe in the justice system. 
I want to. But I can't. Because of Antonio. No, oh, I think it happened a long, long time before that. But I think you see the law as black and white. But for me, it's just so many shades of gray. Because it's one thing when it's on paper, but it's another thing, quite another thing, when it has to be carried out by people. And even your own personal code of right and wrong is tough enough that you were willing to have your own daughter arrested, but she was in desperate trouble. If, if Nora hadn't thrown herself in front of you Look, to stop... I'm not proud of that, Carlotta. I was confused and scared for Rachel. I was trying to do what was right. And I'm not proud of lying for Eli. But I was also trying to do what was right. And I guess... I guess when push comes to shove, what I think is right and what you think is right are two very different things. Well, we are two very different people, you and I. Mm. Yeah. But despite those differences, there's a common ground. And on that common ground, I mean, there's something very real something very deep between us. But there's something else between us. And that's not going to go away. And I'm not sure how to get around it. I can't believe that we followed Max. I can't believe he went to pause. I still can't believe. After everything we went through, not only did we not learn anything new, but all the takeout places are closed. Honey, the kitchen in every restaurant in this town closes at 10 o'clock. Rody's closed a uh, half hour ago. Wow. Honey. I'm hallucinating. Oh, my God, I see cheese and crackers and nuts. Enjoy, see you in the morning, Georgie. Georgie, mm, can I pick them or can you, I pick them? You can pick them. Look at this. Honey roasted cashews. <sighs> My favorite thing in the whole world. Next to you, of course. And Georgie, you know, for bringing all this in. Smoltz Gouda? You know what? How does she know all our favorite stuff? Smoked oysters. Mm. Oh. My stomach is making a sound that I've never heard it make before. Or we have a visitor. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Well, what, explain this. I can't. Explain this. Didn't we just see you at Max's, huh? Honey, listen, I kind of know how the dog feels, okay? I, I know what it's like to be desperately in love with you. You're a dog. You, I have no idea what you are. Listen, you ugly mutt. If you have any value on this earth, you are going to tell me what happened at Max's tonight, okay? Just as I suspected. No value on this earth at all. You know, when we got together, mm. our children were grown, and they turned out fine. And we, I thought, shared a sense of pride and accomplishment and a rediscovered freedom. And then I took Anila. Yeah. And then everything changed. Now, I understand that you obviously need to return to parenting. What are the things I do? Well, that's not all you do. But I don't... I don't have the same need. I mean, I didn't feel it with Sheila, and that's a big part of what broke us up. So you're saying I destroyed that sense of freedom, and now I have to choose between you and Eli? No, I'm definitely not saying that. I'm just saying... I'm just telling you where I am with this. Look, Eli, he needs you. And you need him just as much. Now, you have taken on something humongous. 
And it just blows me away how strong you are. Oh. Well, don't make it out to be something superhuman because it's, it's just instinct. Yeah, well, then let's just say your instinct runs a, a lot deeper than mine. <laughs> No. I'm not saying you have to choose. I'm not. It's just that... I've missed you. And I've missed you. hoping that we'd have time to not speak. But Eli's home alone, and I... I know he got some new medication today, and I really should be there to make sure that he takes the right dose. for last call? Yes, it is too early for last call. Well, no one new has come in in the past hour, and practically everyone else has left. Fine. Close it up. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get on the phone, and I'm going to call every agent and every contact I made when I was booking acts for Blue Jay. I'm gonna get someone great to play at Indigo, Uncle RJ. I promise. That's terrific, Rachel. Don't jump the gun. You're kidding, aren't you? Mm. Chikara will bring Blue Jay music back to Indigo. I know it. <laughs> Trust me. I have a real good feeling about it. Please just tell me the twins are back in their beds. Please just tell me that. They're not mad. put them in their flannel pajamas? I don't remember. Max, they are warm and sleeping in some motel room, okay? They are money in the bank. But whoever took those children, they're, they're not gonna hurt them. They says check in with Renee's cash ship, still a million and a half short. Oh, God. You know, I was, I was fine when I was running around like a lunatic, but now that I'm stopped, I just my whole life is on fire. I, nothing I can do about it. One and a half million dollars. How am I gonna get that? Okay, Max, let's do what? Let's let's just think, okay? Let's think how how can we raise that that amount of money? <laughs> Do you have anything else that you can sell? Anything? A ski lodge. Okay. 
as for Luna Knight. I mean, that's where the twins were born. Okay. Uh, all right. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. It's the only way I get them back. Lou, who, who am I gonna sell it to, huh? I already tapped out Ace. I tapped out Renee. I... Okay, well, who else has that kind of money? Bo. He's too suspicious. Oh, God, 42 hours. Are you sure they're sleeping? I'm sure, Max. And someone's watching over them. Believe me, look, I, I know that you, you just got to believe. If you're going to get through this, you got to believe that someone is really watching over them. I blindly think that when they could be... I just don't have that faith. Well, then you fake it. You remember when Al and CJ fell down that mine shaft and, and you went to save them? You remember that? They told me that, that you were hanging there by a rope and all the walls were crumbling around you and those two little boys were just standing there right on that, on that ledge that was no wider than a church pew. Max, what did you do? I mean, I know, I, I bet you just looked at them and gave them this big grin and, and what did you tell them? Not to worry. Yeah. I'd get them out of there. But this is, this, this isn't the same. No, it's not. No, it's not the same, Max. But you just got to keep on telling yourself, I mean, going through the motions, you got to keep on telling yourself as positively as you told those two little boys that, that everything from now on is going to be all right. I was lying then, too. But they felt better, didn't they? They were reassured. Max. Hello. Mr. Holden. What have you been doing tonight? I've been running around getting your money together. What do you think I've been doing? And? What do you mean, and? What else do you want? You entertained the commissioner and his wife earlier. No, 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 no. They, I, I didn't do that. They came over here on their own. I, no, I, that wasn't my fault. When we said no police, we meant it. Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live.